All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael Dean. You're watching the Prince Podcast. And before we continue, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down below and check us out on Patreon. Patreon.com slash podcast juice. All right, with that, let's work it like a job. Peace. gentlemen welcome back to the prince podcast here on podcastjuice.net my name is michael dean and joining me today we have mr dj dave paul sir how are you i'm good i'm good how are you michael man i'm doing great uh just happy to be alive and, and talking about prince <laughs> you know yes. that's what we do here <laughs> um but let me give you all a little background on dj dave paul because actually as i as i've been reading up on him it's not just that i know he's associated with prince and michael jackson but actually uh he's a hip-hop head so i can really sit here and, and, and appreciate what he brings to the table because uh for those of you who don't remember the dj was always the you know the head center point of the game back in the day you know it was all about the djs uh, you know, when I was coming up, the DJs was more popular than the rappers, you know, so I appreciate, uh, the, you know, the DJs and what they mean to hip hop, not just rap music, but to hip hop itself. You know, that's, I remember watching, I'm a geek out for me. I remember watching uh, uh, Wild Stuff, if I got the movie right, with that classic scene with Grandmaster Flash on the one and twos in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, you know, in the that, kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> that was like <laughs> head buster to me. I was like, whoa. You know, so dope. But anyway, man, uh, we got DJ Dave Paul in the house. And let me read a little bit. So this is on, on your website. And I see this from uh, San Francisco Weekly, but I love this. This is a, for 15 years now. Dave Paul has hosted and DJed at the brilliant Prince versus Michael Jackson parties as selections of hits, rarities and remixes from both artists are presented over the course of the evening. Audience members square off in a funky battle holding signs bearing the mug of their favorite entertainer to judge which one is the true king of pop. Now, I imagine this was written a while ago because it's not called Prince versus Michael Jackson anymore. It's just correct. The Prince and Michael Jackson experience, if I got that right. Yes. But I will contest to say that, yes, when you go to his parties, listen, then they're going to play Prince Michael Jackson, he's he's playing the remixes, he's playing the rare jams, twelve inches, all that. I was I, I went to this years ago and was blown away. I can only imagine now, uh, after um, the untimely deaths of both of these men, that uh, there's a whole different feel. Uh, almost, I mean, when I was here at the time, it was almost a spiritual type of thing, man. Just <laughs> you know, I grew up with these guys' music. So to hear it play together in the club, seeing people who appreciate both of them, it is like you will just get caught up in the music. But uh, enough for me talking, man, uh, Dave, man, give us a little background first off on how you started doing the Prince and Michael Jackson experience. Well, the way it started was um, I originally just wanted to do an all Prince party, um, but out here in San Francisco, there was Dream Factory. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, man, I don't want to step on their toes. And my friend Jeff was like, yo, why don't, why don't you add in Michael? Like, I'll do the Michael part. And I was like, nah, it's like, because I just, you know, I was so into Prince. I, you know, I was like, I wasn't really trying to hear that. <laughs> and uh, so every time I'd bring it up to him, he'd be like, dude, just put in Michael. Like, I'll do the Michael. And I was like, nah, I don't know. And then finally, I just broke down. I was like, okay, cool. You bring your Michael records. I'll bring my Prince records, and we'll do a party. And, and so that's how, it was, that's how it started. You know, it was originally, you know, I wanted it to be all Prince. Um, and the funny thing is right, right when we started it is right when sort of Dream Factory stopped doing their parties. Okay. Um, but, I, but I didn't know they had stopped, you know. So it's, it kind of filled the void for, for the Prince fans out here in the Bay Area. And in terms of like, you know, when you went with the whole the Prince versus Michael Jackson thing, was that well, let me explain that a little bit. As far as what do you mean? I mean, was it like you were battling the two? Nah, man, it, it wasn't really a battle. I mean, really, we only used the versus name because it was 
it was catchy oh. and people hear it and they're like, oh yeah, verses, you know, but it was to us, it was never verses. It was, you know, but we couldn't call it like we love Prince of Michael Jackson party. <laughs> <laughs> you could. No, but I well, it probably could. It probably would have worked. <laughs> well, man, talk, talk to me then. Uh, listen, so I assume, you know, you grew up in the eighties where, you know, it basically is, it's a Michael Prince world that would, you know, Madonna, of course, but those two, man, was, they had the lock. They had that. They just had it down, man. Uh, yeah. And the, I don't know. I mean, if it's maybe hard to explain for some of the younger uh, listeners who weren't around during that time, but man, what did it mean to you? Like uh, Prince, of course, Prince and Michael too, in terms of like their influence and effect on music back then, man. Oh man, it was incredible. I mean, for me, in a lot of ways, it links the same way I felt about hip hop back then. Okay. Um, it was it was just so raw and and uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure probably a lot of people say this, but I mean, Prince music changed my life. Um, it really was a blueprint to life. If you followed him in the early years. And if you were a teen and in your 20s, I mean, those songs meant a lot. Right, right. And, and were you ever like, because when I was growing up back then, it was always the conversation somehow would always shift to, you know, Prince versus Michael. Like, who was better and this and that and the other. Did you ever have any of those types of conversations? Nah, because I mean, usually I got teased for listening to Prince. <laughs> Talk so. about that. <laughs> I I used to catch a lot of flack, man. People would call me a lot of names over over listening to Prince. You know, it wasn't uh, it, it was very different. Now I gotta so. imagine so you being a hip hop head and listening to Prince because I was in this situation where, I, you know, I was in you know in hip hop, really, you know, graffiti and you know rapping and trying to get into music. But my sort of thing I kept to myself was my Prince shit. Like, oh, okay. You know, this is my real stuff, but you know, everybody ain't really trying to hear that right now. Right. Uh, you know, what what was that that whole sort of that sit was there ever that situation where you almost can't really play your print stuff in front of people or anything like that? No, nah, I mean, because I mean I was always playing, you know, Prince music when I was DJing. I mean, I started DJing in the eighties, so I mean mm-hmm. was always playing nineteen ninety nine, Little Red Corvette, Controversy, tracks like that. Was was there? Oh. Let me ask you this: as a DJ, then in, in regards to Prince's music, was there ever a time during sort of his his uh, you know album releases and stuff where you, there was stuff you couldn't play? Like, wasn't re- was it popping in the club, or it was like ah, people want to hear this stuff more than that? You know what I mean? Um, man, you can you can fit in anything. Okay. Um, it, it's just a matter of knowing when to play it and how to fit it in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like when he did love sexy and, and stuff like that, probably a lot of cats weren't playing tracks off that album in the club. Um, I, I tried that one time. I, I don't know how I got in a position to DJ a party, but I, I just knew, uh, oh man, when I play, I know it's going to shut it down. <laughs> and no, nah, it didn't work like that. <laughs> it, it shut, it the shut it down. down huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not the way I wanted to. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, man, get that get get that dude off the stage, man. Get him yeah. off of it. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> um, I can imagine. I don't yeah. think I've ever I've even played that track in a in a club. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just like to myself, I'm like, man, this is funky. I'm like, how could it not? But you know, it's a different dichotomy. It's just a whole different thing. And I try, remember, you know, what was this was '88, whatever was popping in '88, it just didn't work. I mean, I'm not no DJ anyway, so. It was probably just a, an abrupt stop. Rain and is it, wet. It like, probably, you know, and if it was just a regular, you know, club night, I mean, trying to trying to fit that track in is going to be near impossible. Right. <laughs> what? Um, talk to me about Michael, man. Like, um, what is it about Michael Jackson uh, that really gets really gets you going? Oh man, just uh, like the funk, the the like. It's got that kind of like funky, those funky disco songs. I mean, they're mm. they're they're funk and they're disco at the same time, you know. Um, and those man, those just move the dance floor. Like 
people will just dance like crazy to, to some of those tracks. Yeah, I would imagine like some of the off the wall stuff is a must. Oh man, you know? that's such a great album. Yeah. Um, talk to us about the experience of of going to your show. I mean, what do what are people gonna see when they come? Because I, I also got to say too, you are about to start a tour. Uh, you're gonna be going around the country, uh, bringing this show around to different clubs. What what is if I was to walk in there? What can I expect? Man, that's the thing is you never know. Um, I always say the show is on the dance floor. Like, I don't need to be on a stage. I don't need a spotlight on me. I'm not going to be doing a, a cheerleading routine. I'm not doing magic <laughs> tricks. I'm not going to be jumping up and down smiling. I'm just worrying about the music. The The whole show is on the dance floor. So uh, we're not going to see you up there behind the, the one and twos with the uh, Dirty Mind bikini brief on spinning? Oh, you, no way. <laughs> <laughs> our clothes, the thing, our the thing hair, is, we don't, you we might, don't care. You, you might see some people dressed like that, though. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> but not me. <laughs> <laughs> Dave said, I ain't doing it. <laughs> Come on, man. Nobody want to see me like that. <laughs> Get a little rude boy mixed with Dirty Diana. I <laughs> nah, just playing. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, you know, what I when I went to it, man, it was such a thing to hear. I don't know, because I'll say this. A lot of times I sort of have prints like it's just in my headphones or it's at my house. But I rarely get to just hear the deep cuts out in the yeah. club, lo you know, loud and with other people and then that energy from other people. So it's a whole experience to really be in there with like-minded people. And I remember when I went and saw you, you played um, Another Lover, Hole in Your Head. You know, it was a 12-inch version. I damn near lost my mind. I was like, oh, I never heard this this loud, you know, booming with a whole bunch of people. It just took on a whole different experience of that song, man. Like, to, I hold to this day, I'm like, man it's one thing to hear these songs by yourself or what, but to hear them with a lot of people in, you know, in a club environment, some of these records, they just, they sound totally different. I was almost like I was hearing it in a whole different way. And I could really feel like, I was like, you know, I, I could feel Prince on this, like a way that I never did before. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but uh, you really get caught up in it when you're around all those people, man. And these are fans of Mike. Yeah. And Prince, you yeah. Know? And it's cool because I've seen I've seen over the years fans come out and fans that are Michael Jackson fans and they'll be end up becoming Prince fans and I've seen mm -hmm. Prince fans become Michael Jackson fans because of the parties. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I can I can see that man, and that's the great thing about it. You know, it's really a celebration of both of these guys, right? But then you also play. Like, you know, the other stuff that's connected to it. I would, you know, the time. Oh, yeah. Time, Jack. Sheila E., Andre Simone, yes. um, you know, the Jacksons, Jackson 5, yeah, that's, um, Janet, of course. Yeah, that's my wheelbarrow. I'm, I'll be like, I'm like, I'm. Not, not too much LaToya, maybe once I'm in a while. Stare, you're, not, you're not pumping that full force LaToya? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> maybe well, Centipede by Reby. There, that's there, you go. there you go. That was a cut. Oh, what was. Uh, didn't Diana was that muscles? Diana and Michael did Michael did muscles. Oh yeah, muscles. Yeah, that was kind of that was kind of dope. But wow, yeah, I forgot about that track. I yeah, might have man. to slip that in sometime. Check that out, man. Yeah. That, um. But yeah, I mean, there's so much great stuff coming from that whole time. It's all connected. That's the thing about it. You know, you got, and it's so funny because I think probably, well, I guess it's interesting, Janet. And Latoya, though you're not gonna play the Latoya song, I'm thinking, you know, they have that Prince connection, right? Uh, right. Latoya covered uh, when you were mine. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Private Joy. Private Joy. Yeah, you're probably not gonna play that. No, but... you ain't catching me playing that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, always the... thought, I always thought that was a horrible cover. Yeah, that that would be your I know and you know, the dance floor. Be... <laughs> I still bought it, but. <laughs> But, had to have it, had to have it for the collection. There you, you know? go, there you go. But there's that connect, you know, that, you know, the connection sort of started, and then of course, uh, you're probably not gonna play this either. But the Jesse Johnson, uh, Dream Street tracks uh, from Janet. But but 
Ooh. it's all sort of, con- you know, it all gets the connection going. Um, I'm going to ask you this question, and this is something I always talk about amongst my friends and stuff. What did, what, what did you have ever wanted to see Prince and Michael do a song together back in the day? If they would have did bad, I think it would have been incredible. Mm. And even after Michael had passed, I always thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if Sony like hit up Prince and was like, hey, let's finish this track. Let's let's go in there. Let's take the masters and let's go like because, I mean, can you imagine Prince playing a, a bad, bad, bad guitar solo on that? Ooh. He would have yeah. tore that song up. Yeah. 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 I, I always wish they had done something together because I just think it would have almost even whether the song would have been good or not, but I would assume it would be good. But I just thought it had been such, it would have been a powerful image. Yeah. Uh, even if it was a ballad, it would have been dope. Yeah. It would have just been so powerful. And it's like you could see like these two. And on and one hand, they're totally opposites of each other. But the two titans of the game united, and even if they just did it for charities and whatever, but it would have just been hella powerful. And you see this kind of stuff all the time now, of course, with artists always collaborating, uh, particularly in hip hop. You know, you definitely see a lot of uh, rappers jump on each other's tracks. But I actually do. I would have wanted to see that too. I mean, just like yeah, it'd have been crazy. But I can understand why you didn't see it. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know. They were they were both in different places at that time mentally, and right. you know it just didn't happen. Yeah, I gotta imagine there's so much ego and like, you know, I mean these guys were the top, and, and I was always always figure it's like it's so interesting because I could I would say with ego could be involved among other things, but I always got to remember too like, you know Michael got you know um, Quincy Jones and. Quincy Jones was the shit. <laughs> like he was on a whole other, you know what I mean? Like for right. him to come and do you know, as we, you know, R and B disco pop music from what he was doing before. The, if, if his ego or whatever it was, he had this the vision to see, you know, what Michael's gonna be the I mean, Michael Jackson was already Michael Jackson, but it was like he about to be the next Thing. we gonna do something on his record that you know ain't nobody gonna understand it's just incredible to think like man the significance of getting Quincy Jones to produce Michael Jackson is a huge thing and sometimes I feel like that conversation gets lost a little bit because it's like we're so used to yeah of course Quincy's producing or, but if you go back and look at what he was doing before it wasn't like doing pop record you know right so it's just uh it's amazing to me like that he could even get that and then that collaboration not only works but changes the game oh forever totally right? i mean i mean that changed it from michael jackson to just michael you'd even he'd even need a last name <laughs> right yeah it's uh that 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 whole run is, is amazing like those records are so much a part of you know you know world americana pop culture but if you just really sit down and go listen to those and if you talk to somebody who was around when they came out the impact on those on the people on the world was unlike anything we had ever seen and probably have ever seen going forward like i can always remember motown 25 like i ain't never seen nothing like that a moment on TV where you watch something on TV, blown away. I remember going to school the next day and that was just, everybody was talking about it. And then we watched it at school. I was like, huh? yeah, I, I still watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's just a man on stage, but it's incredible. But, um, and you know, what was great about those records, those records made Prince better. Hmm. Because at that time, there was so much good music coming out. I mean, Hall & Oates, Madonna, mm-hmm. all, all the pop stars, huge records coming out at that time. When everyone, it, it, all your peers are, are kicking butt, you're going you're gonna to step up your game. Yeah, you have to. You have to, yeah. And he did, man. I, 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 you hit it right on the nail. Prince is always like... You know, it's as good as what's out there. 
you know it almost to me i always look at it as he sees what's out there and then says, okay i i'm gonna do that but i'm gonna flip it like i'm gonna show you right. how i would do it and it'd be so unique and freaky and funky like it's like god who is this guy you know it's, it's, it's incredible and that's kind of how i felt when i finally got into prince like i was a i was pure michael <laughs> 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 You know, I was at school with the Jerry Curl beat it jacket and the loaf, <laughs> Michael, right? But uh, once I uh, saw Purple Rain and I could put a face to some of the music I had heard before, but had no idea who Prince was. I just heard the music. Right. It was over. I was like, okay. It, it, it's over. <laughs> and you know what's great? He does Purple Rain. He could have came back with the Purple Rain Part 2 type album. Right. But he totally flipped it. And that's probably where a lot of people was like, oh, okay, this is my guy. <laughs> like <laughs> When you hear around the world in the day and you're just like, whoa, this is different. This this is great, yeah. different. But there's something about that at that particular time. I think just people decide, okay, I'm a lifelong fan. Like whatever yeah. he does, I'm on board. So, I mean, you could take a, a, a band like ACDC, you always know what you're going to get, mm. you know. But Prince, you never knew what you – I mean, then he comes out with Under the Cherry Moon <laughs> and and only performs like half of Girls and Boys in it, doesn't do any like live performances. <laughs> right, right. Like, and comes out with a black and white movie that's a comedy. Like, like who does – what is – yeah. <laughs> And that was, that was next level. Like a lot of people couldn't even handle that. Yeah, and then those when them twelve inches start dropping on you. Oh man, you can yeah. Forget about it, you can forget about it. Yep. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about this too. You you had a so talk to me about you had a magazine, the Bomb Hip Hop Magazine. Yeah. For some yeah. reason, I kind of think I've heard of that before. Now I'm again, I'm heavy. I used to you know, I used to rap. You know, I used to be a rapper doing music and shows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, read the source and all those other magazines talk to me about the bomb hip-hop magazine now this is out the bay area or san francisco yeah yeah i started that in um 1991 um i was doing a um a college uh radio show and i used to do like a top 40 list and then i'd write like a couple paragraphs about like whoever was coming to town or uh, whatever and a few magazines had hit me up upstarts and they were like oh do you want to write for us i'm like cool i'd write a couple pieces and the magazines never came out and i was like oh man screw this i'm just gonna start my own magazine mm. um and so that's what i did <laughs> and how long did the magazine run for uh of uh, 91 to 96 wow yeah and was this uh distributed you know, like in tower records or you know, yeah i mean tower tower was actually really good they were always they were always really cool about distribution and they they always paid which was great okay. um compared to a lot of other distributors which i learned later in life when i did the record label the record distributors are the same way as <laughs> they just don't pay you <laughs> <laughs> like or they pay they pay you just enough to get your next record wow right right yeah well man so you had the the magazine what was um any like classic covers uh uh, no, I mean, it was all, it was all, um, graph art covers. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's um, what's up. Yeah. Yeah. So people would, you know, it was a black and white magazine and people would just draw different graph covers for me. And, nice. um, yeah, I mean, it was cool. I mean, we, we covered, you know, DJs, we covered, uh, graffiti, wow. we covered all the, you know, underground MCs, everything from like Red Man to House of Pain, Leaders in the New School. Okay. Um, Wow. Okay. Wow. So this is the golden that that new. You know, he said in the '90s. So that was like the shift coming coming out of. Uh, man, I'm trying to think, Public Enemy, but then shifting into, you know, some early gangster stuff. And uh, you, I, I assume you had Paris up in there. Yep. From your area, right? Too short. E40. So that's the thing about well, at least you know the Bay Area. That the movement over there was always you know, heavy, we always, and so I'm here in Seattle, so a lot of the slang and stuff kind of filtered up here, but we really respected the whole, you know, put your own music out hustle and, and all of that stuff, so we really kept our eye on the Bay Area. 
Right. You know. So you probably know Flavor. You probably remember Flavor Magazine. Flavor Magazine. I sure. Yeah. 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 You might maybe I'm gonna shout my guy out. Uh, you, ever, you want Mike Clark? Yeah, Mike Clark and uh, yeah. Allison, yeah. Rachel. Yep. B. Mello up there in Seattle. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. We probably know a lot of the same people now you say that. <laughs> I remember the first time I came up to Seattle, it was for a um it was for a Sir Mix a Lot record release party. Which album? Um so man, was, I, want, uh, I want to say Swass, but I don't I think it was probably the one after that. Uh, seminar. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, you know what? I may have been at that party now. I, I I was probably there as a matter of fact. Yeah, they flew they flew in like all the college radio DJs okay. and mix show DJs and Yeah, it was a big um, event. I remember this. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually had the pleasure, I say it's the pleasure uh, of going on the road with Mix. Uh man, but this was later like 98 or 99. Uh and just had a ball, man. It was it was fun. We went just, you know, from here to Chicago, all over. But yeah, shout nice. out to Mix. Yeah, shout out to Mix. Um, but yeah, man, so uh, you did the magazine and then you, you started a label. So talk to us about the record company. Yeah. Um, start the label is, is the way I started it was um, we'd always do demo reviews. So the, the first album I released was basically just from demos that people had sent. And that's how we had met you know, a lot of those, um, those rap groups. Okay. And I knew nothing about releasing a record. So I did it. I did it through this other company, this independent label company. And, um, that was my first lesson in, in (laughs) what they did was they got credit at the pressing plant and pressed them up and sold them. And then the guy disappeared. Wow. Yeah. That's the game. Yeah. So I remember, like years later, when I when I tried to press something at that pressing plant, they were like, "Nah, we're not messing with you." Wow! And I'm like, "But that wasn't me." <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Was there any uh, any artists from the releases go on to uh, any sort of mainstream or? or um, I mean, I, I mean, I, do, I also did a lot of DJ stuff, the Return of the DJ series. So you know, people like Hubert, um, Z Trip, oh, okay. Mixmaster Mike. Yeah. All those guys. Um, as far as rappers like Blackalicious, um, Mystic Journeyman, um, there's probably a few others I'm just not thinking of. Swollen Members. Nice, nice. All right. And how long did the uh, label go on for? Or, or is it still going? Nah, it's not still going. It's, uh, I think, probably like 2007. I think I stopped. I was just, I was basically getting into debt and uh you know when you have a few albums that just are not selling you're not making money Mm -hmm. um you can go in the hole real quick wow and you know back then it was like everybody well i don't say everybody but i know a lot of people was like yo i just started my record company son or you know yeah (laughs) the thing the thing is i started a little too late because by the time it hit um 2000 like the game was over mm. um and and i wasn't really like putting out records till like 97 okay um you know as a label so i had like you know two what two three good years and then you know the record industry went, went in the hole <laughs> wow what do you uh what do you see things now in terms of hip hop you know what's your opinion on and that's a, and let me ask that question properly because I'm not talking about hip hop. <laughs> Actually, hip hop I think is cool. <laughs> I'm talking about like rap that's popular and different things you see in the mainstream. Uh, I like the distinction between the two. Where do you see rap today versus where it was? You know, I guess, and even when you were doing your your record company. I think I think um, lyrics and delivery doesn't matter anymore. Mm. I think younger the bulk of younger kids don't care um i mean when i hear every once in a while i'm like okay let me check out all this new stuff that's coming out and and yeah there's some good stuff out there and the music's pretty cool but the raps are garbage you say trash (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. And it's just, um, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, you're old. And I'm like, I'm old enough to know better. Like, you know, if I'm looking at a, a Rakim or a Big Daddy Kane or, you know, a Red Man, those guys were killing it. You know, right. Slick Rick. I mean, so many. And the, and the stuff now is just like, honestly, I th- it, it just seems like it's you're going to the circus and people just want to watch the circus. Wow. Because <laughs> okay. there's a whole lot of clowns. Mm. Well, I mean, why do you think it's like that, though? Because, it's, it, you know, back in those days you mentioned, we had two live crew. We had, you know, uh, two short. But I think, you know, the thing is we had, you also had the other side of the gang. Like you had the Rock Cam, you had the Karis One. Yeah, you know, there was some balance to it. So it wasn't all just one thing. But But also... Too short and two live crew were way better rappers than what's coming out now. Like, like wow. they could, you know, let's face it. I mean, they could at least rap. You know, they were they were much better. I feel lyrically and and delivery wise. Why is it like that? Um, I think there's a lot of reasons. I think one of one of the reasons is it's easier to put this stuff out than it is to find a true MC and to market and promote them. Um, I think the, the bar is much lower. Seems like kids want that kind of trashy. It's like Jerry Springer rap. It's just kind of like, ah, man, Very sensationalized. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it's I, just, do it's they just, know any it's different, just though? sloppy and it's just, you know, it's just, oh man, it's just too sloppy for me. Mm. All right. All right. I feel you. Yeah. It's uh, I try not to be the old guy to stay off my lawn type of thing. So on one hand, I, I appreciate, like I said, okay, this is what they're into. You know, I'm sure when I was into, I remember like I was in the Prince and, like I remember my uncle, he just looked at Prince and was like, fake ass James Brown, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I was mad at the time, but I could see what he is seeing. I, I know why he said right. that. You know, but, I mean I, I get why it's popular. Right. And um it's just it's not for me. Yeah. You know. Um Now do you have to play these do you when you spend do you spend other different nights? You know, aside from the I do, but I do all retro theme parties. I I okay. never have to play anything new. Okay, so you're not bump, you're not playing Migos, and you're not bumping. Them. No, not playing any of that. <laughs> they said, "Are you doing?" It? <laughs> well, man, I got this. Man, I got a uh, Kim Kardashian. Want to hire you, man? I want to hear nothing but trap trap music. Uh, I'll send them to. <laughs> I'll, I'll recommend somebody else because that's wow. That's. That's not my thing, you know? I mean, if they want an 80s party, they want some funk and disco or whatever, I could do that. But if they want, like, the new stuff, I'll just, I'll be like, that ain't my thing. Like, oh, okay. let me hip you to someone who can do that good, you oh, know? Okay, you got um, some integrity then. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've learned that find your niche, and if your niche is the retro stuff, stick with it. Okay. Because, I mean, you can go to, there's probably at least 50 clubs you can go to tonight in seattle and hear new music right but but next weekend there's only one club where you can go hear prince of michael music very true very true uh the nectar lounge matter of fact yep here in seattle um man th- th- so you, you're going on tour now how, uh i don't think i asked you how long has the prince and michael jackson experience been going for 15 years 15 years man yeah. salute man that's incredible still going yeah man wow have you have you seen um you know since the, the death of prince has there been different uh sort of energy at the shows or more people or mm, i mean there was a little bit of a rush like a few months after um it's kind of gone back to normal i think the hardest thing is just it's hard for me because Prince music used to get me through everything in life. Um, but how's Prince music going to get me through his death? 
Mm. So I know it, it. I know it's not as enjoyable for me personally. Okay. To, it's just it's it's hard to play his music. I understand that. Um, talk to me if you can about. Uh, I think I remember hearing about you had some sort of interaction with Prince or something about the the parties. Is that true? No, I had no interaction oh, okay. with Prince. <laughs> I thought there was some kind of conversation about using his name or, or something. No. Okay. My, my never, bad. Never heard, never heard from anybody. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I used to always try to get word to him and invite him when he was in town because I was, I was so naive like he would show up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. That, that would have been funny. Man, uh. All right. I don't know why I thought that was something, but uh, would it be your uh, last question here? Would it be your dream place to DJ? Main room of First Avenue. Ooh. All right. Now I see you are playing in First Avenue. Is that not the main room where you're going to be at? No, it's the uh, Seventh Street entry. Oh, okay. Which is sold out, by the way. Throw that out there. Yep. Talk Third that time. Talk now. Third time. Talk it. Shit. So, <laughs> eventually, it will be in the main room. Okay. Okay. Man, that'll be straight out of Purple Rain, man. Oh, man. Can you imagine <laughs> playing the 12 inch of Let's Go Crazy in the main room oh, of wow. First Avenue? Shoot, I'll come up there and do the. The, the dance brother, the brothers up there dancing, cursing and myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's okay. that's definitely that's one of my goals. I mean, it's funny, though, as, as a DJ and you see when you see Purple Rain like that almost I mean, that pretty much just came became one of my dreams right then was like, oh, man, the DJ there, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a goal. Okay, all right, man. I can see you. Uh, that'd be cool if you was you was a uh, if you DJ DJ at uh, Paisley Park. That was always one of my goals until he passed. Okay. And now it's like, well, you know, if that if that happens someday, it'd be great. But it's it it wouldn't be the same because my my goal always in playing Paisley Park was him to hear me play. Mm. That's what's up, yeah. The one time I've been to Paisley Park and they had, uh, he had brought a DJ in. And no disrespect to that DJ, but man, one of the, not the best DJ I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, huh? He's just like, I was just like what are you doing, bro? <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> Prince had to become the DJ uh, and he was way better. I was like, man. What's going on here? But maybe Prince did that on purpose. Possibly, like, possibly. You know, it's like, okay, I'm gonna bring this guy in. He's not so good. So then I can jump up there and be like, have everyone just be like, whoa, Prince is, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he was doing his thing up there. I definitely knew his music better and right. you know, the pacing, and everything. But but uh man, uh DJ Dave Paul, man, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing with us, man. Like I said, I I've I've been a fan from far away watching what you do. And I got to speak for the rest of the fans out there, man. We really appreciate, you know, the work that you put in, man. Oh, thank you, man. I, I appreciate the work you're putting in. I've been watching you. Oh, man, I appreciate that. We, we appreciate each other. How about that? Yes, yes. <laughs> See, that's the thing is people people always think nobody's watched. But, man, on Facebook, there's always somebody watching. Yeah, true enough. True enough. I, I, I watch a lot of people, a lot of DJs, a lot of other parties. Um a lot of venues i'm always watching is there any uh djs that uh you want to show some love shout out or anybody oh else? man man is there, or is there a gang of them you don't remember <laughs> that well that's the thing is there's so many and i don't want right. to leave anyone out i mean there's man there's so many good djs out there you know one of my guys uh local homie but i know him from back in the day uh dj supreme Oh yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, I always shout him out. Um, and then uh, shoot, now nah, I start forgetting people. 
<laughs> no, you, you almost caught me on that. So I was gonna, I was gonna name like five, six people, and I was like, oh man, there's, and, but there's gonna be at least another five or six right. that'll be like, dude, you forgot me. Right, I already know I'm here, but oh, I will shout out. Uh, let me make sure I shout out some of the other Prince uh, related podcasts and shows. Uh, of course, we got to shout out Doctor Funkenberry. Uh, yeah, we got to shout out um, Peach and Black, putting in work. Uh, Casey Rain, uh, Velvet Reality, uh, Purple Underground, uh, Prince's Friend. And if I somehow misplace somebody, I'm just because I'm doing this live and da, 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 da. But but yeah, shout out to everybody that's doing something in the Prince community. All voices uh, bring something to the table. And uh, that's how I like that's how I think about it. I think about it because I'm a fan and so I like to hear different perspectives and each person sort of brings their own unique <clears throat> sensibilities to the game so I love it all love that's it what that that's the great thing about the internet is we've I've met so many people that would have never met before you know right um just as an early Prince fan sometimes you, you always felt like you were alone you were you know unless you went to a concert and you you found other fans but uh but now I mean when you see how many how many Prince fans are out there, it's, and and that you can connect with, it's incredible. Yeah, and that, and that I would imagine, particularly what you're doing, because you've been doing it for 15 years, and you're going to these different cities. There's got to be a lot of the same people when you come into town. Oh, okay, you know, Dave is back. You know, what I'm saying you get to see these people that you've probably seen coming to the to the to the uh, shows year after year. I would imagine uh, there's quite the community of people. Yeah, I mean, you 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 become friends with some of these people. I mean, you see them all the time. You start talking. You you know, you become friends on Facebook. You start chatting on there, and you know, it's 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 great. I've met a, I've met a lot of uh, really great people through through doing these parties. Word word. All right, man. Well, let's wrap things up, Dave. Where can people find you online? Uh, Facebook. Um. You can either search for the Prince of Michael experience or just search for Dave Paul. All right. And of course, you can check us out uh, podcastjuice.net, uh, princepodcast.com. You can look us up on Facebook. Just look up uh, Podcast Juice. And of course, on Twitter um, uh, at Podcast Juice and at M Dean. With that, we're about to get up out of here. But like I always say, Work it like a job. We'll see you next time, people. Then I say...